Back again, back again. Another episode of a Muslim and an atheist breaks bread. What you saying, Pat? I'm good, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so last video I thought was very, very interesting. We did Krishna telling us about the multiverse over 5,000 years ago. And you know, I felt like um, we needed to just dive a little deeper into that. Um, so I found a video. I found the video um, again just explaining that further it's actually a monk explaining it so I thought we'd watch this and see see what we think did you have any um, take homes from that last video Pop? I'm interested um, just taking it in at the moment again like I said astro stuff I'm kind of studying a little bit, I suppose. So multiverse, mm -hmm. multi-dimensions, multi-this. I'm interested. I'm just listening to the language and figuring out how they're talking about the same thing, just using new you know, terms and words yeah, yeah, as such. It's not everyone's cup of tea to consume an entire podcast. That's why. Welcome to The Renvi Show's Highlights channel, TRS Clips. Subscribe and hit that bell icon. Something I've been studying a lot of lately is astrophysics, which is, you know, the physics of the universe, black holes, the stars, and, and the deeper you get into astrophysics, you realize that the universe is massive. It's just incredibly large. You don't even understand how large it is. If you think it's large, just read a little bit of astrophysics and your mind will be blown away by, uh, you know, how much more mega it is than you believe it is. Since you've read the Bhagavad Gita, since you've studied it, sir, since you've uh, read all these holy scriptures, uh, does any of the holy scriptures actually talk about the universe as in, you know, outer space, what's out there? Oh yeah, extremely in great detail. So it's so fascinating, Ranveer, the Western world, about 700 years ago, only knew that the earth is flat. And they believe that the Earth is the center of the universe. That was the geocentric theory. Then it moved to the heliocentric theory that the sun is the center. And our, the scripture... So, flat Earth theory used to be the preeminent theory 700 years ago. That's what he's saying there, isn't it? Yeah. But whilst Hindus, they were on the rare Earth thing from before. Prior, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, again, flat earth and all this flat earth stuff is interesting to me. <laughs> See, flat earth is not Confusing. interesting to me. Huh? Flat earth isn't interesting to me. Isn't it? No. Why do you dismiss it completely? Yeah, I've dismissed the fact that the world is flat. Why? In its entirety. Um, because I believe that there's measures and tools and things that you can determine that the world is a sphere. Like what? Um, like geometrical tools, I can't remember the names of them, but I was watching, I think I was watching, was it a Neil deGrasse Tyson video mm. ages ago? Like, cause when all Flat Earth came mm -hmm. out, I was like, okay, let's be interested to mm. see what's going on. And I just watched like about 10 videos. I'll have to get, we'll watch one actually. But ultimately I was just like, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not flat. And also, if it was flat, where were the edges? You'd have edges if it was flat, right? Maybe. If it was flat, it would have edges. So, well, where would those edges? The flat Earth theory presents, right? I don't really want to go off the video when it's just yeah. Uh, let's not let's not go too let's not go <laughs> right. too off the video. We'll catch but, that at the end. But on on what the video is saying though, it is um, important to note that, like I say, like for us, us I say us. Oh no, <laughs> in the West, to think that like we've always been taught that we're so ahead, we're so like civilized, and it's the West duty to go and teach everyone else about the world, about science, about advanced religion. Advanced, yeah, advanced. 
But the more we know about history, the more we know that there's like, people who were talking about this stuff, like you said, 5,000 years ago. So why now? I mean, the internet, the internet. Suppressed? Yeah, why has that been to, well, it's power, isn't it, essentially? Yeah, but why? Because knowledge is power, isn't it? That's the saying, knowledge is power. If I can make you, if I can kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? If I can, if I can make sure, (laughs) well, not even control your mind. It's a circumference of your thinking, isn't it? Yeah, but if I can make people think that what you're saying isn't true, or even make you seem crazy, then I'm going to be able to manipulate the situation more, isn't it? So that's the first thing you can do. If I can make someone look crazy, I can then manipulate it's people's perception. It's someone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but they're just doing that on a mass. So when we was in school, we wasn't ever taught about, you know, Krishna knowing about multiverse or even, we're taught like the first, the first periods of people Who, realizing- School? Yeah, I'm talking about school yeah, now, because that's school. where your predominant learning is done yeah, now. But, no, no, that's where you learn how to learn, isn't it? at school well your predominant learning is probably done at school like your thought process the way you think of science the way you learn how to learn you learn at school yeah yeah 10 years they tell you this is how you learn when you leave it you're on autopilot with learning effectively but you've passed yeah, but the test because you've been through the schooling system yeah but they've also already indoctrinated programmed you, of course yeah so they've programmed you so that's, that's if you your predominant think what they're giving you as examples tasks and things are real but if you see them as tasks and you go home to a parent who knows this stuff but that's what, but that's exactly <laughs> what i was just about to say to you luckily some people have parents who will challenge this stuff mm. or will point you in the right direction or you might just be one of them people who's like curious and go and read books like i just used to read loads of books mm. which is why i kind of understood school and I was saying this the other day I'm an advocate of education just not of the curriculum or the education system in a sense yeah so what I'm saying to you is like a lot of parents didn't have that so when you go to school you're learning about the first people to think like what do you say was um solar centric or astro yeah, but you got geocentric, which is when the, the Earth was no, the, the center. Flat Earth, the flat Earth thing, yeah, yeah, flat Earth. And then you've got solar centric, where the sun became the center of the mm-hmm, universe. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and what they'll tell you is that, what is it, Christopher Columbus? Not Columbus, James Watson or something. Basically, they sent the man to Australia and it went and killed all that. Cook, that's it, Cook. James Cook. Sent him out there, but that was actually a scientific expedition, and it? to find out about if the, if the sun was the center of the universe. Isn't so they went weird? around there, that done weird? that, murdered everyone. Uh, I was just coming to that bit. I don't know what they was doing there in their room. They say whatever they want, but annihilating a whole population. Yeah, population like the Tasmanians I'm not dead. sure what it has to do with the sun somehow. <laughs> no, no, but what, no, 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 but it is because what, what you're taught is, this is, yeah, exactly. What has that got to do with the sun? So, but that's what they're saying, it's science and Science and government go hand in hand, isn't it? Like science and war. Even now today, look at the nuclear bomb, that's science. But you still, now it's just used as a weapon. So science has always been used as a weapon, always. But yeah, let's carry on, let's carry on. Because in our traditions, the name they have for geography is Bhugol. The earth is round, they knew it all the while. And they have explained in so much of detail that there are five mandals, three trilokis, seven lokas. So the first is the Chandra mandal, whose lok is Chandra lok. It is uh, rotating around a mandal called the Bhu mandal, whose lok is Bhu lok, the earth planet. But this Bhu mandal is also not fixed. It's rotating around the Surya mandal, whose lok is Swar lok. And the Antarix, the space in between is Bhuva. So this Bhu Bhuva Swa creates one Triloki. But the Surya Mandal is also not fixed. Now this I'm telling you from these scriptures, what they have described 5,000 years ago. Mm. That this uh, Surya Mandal is rotating around Parameshthi Mandal. And the Loka, the planet there is Janalok. 
and the Parameshthi Mandal is rotating around another Mandal, Swayambhu Mandal, whose Loka is Brahma Lok. So all this, now science tells us that like the sun, in the Milky Way, there are a hundred billion suns. You know, and like the Milky Way, there are a hundred billion galaxies, which means that there are 10 to the power 22 suns approximately in this entire universe. However, now science is talking about the multiverse theory, right? That there are other universes as well. And the Vedas say, you know what? How many universes are there? All of this that you are perceiving is one universe like this. There are infinite universes. And each with one Shankar, one Brahma, one Vishnu. Yeah, question there. I'm going to say stop. Can you say it once? In terms of the multiverse and yes. the multi Brahmas, then would that mean that some of the thinking of the multiverse is that in this one you're happy, in that one you're sad, in this one you're tall, in that one you're short, but it's all you, so you're varying yeah, I was various say, different so there's, things. Yeah, there's so different would the condition of, of the Brahmas vary? And in one uni multiverse, the Brahma might be the opposite of a Brahma in another one. So the Brahma might be like the god of destruction rather than the god of like creation or... In you know, it, yeah. So it would present a million possibilities on how that universe... I think it would. Which would make everything illogical. Why? Because you could just do that for everything on and on and on and on and say, you know, that's a cat. It's, it's the same thing becoming everything effectively, isn't it? I don't know. I don't get what you mean. Well. It's like we said the other day, like if there's infinite possibilities, mm -hmm. then every, by this, the multiverse, every possible outcome should be in place it's like um oh it's it, it's like positive it is there is no multiverse and it, every possibility of every single thing in place or none got to be there's got to be opposite why because oh you mean there, to the multiverse theory yeah, yeah 100 percent of course there is, is but I'm that's saying. the theory that we're living now the theory we live in now is that there is no multiverse. You know, it's well, my thing is, never mind multiverse, multi this, multi that. We're way down the road years later. Maybe when the advanced races of the past could invent, you know, move stones and stuff. They couldn't invent a camera, could they? So this society is more advanced because we got cameras to take pictures of stuff and prove that it's real. Mm -hmm. Right. So in this society that we live in now, multiverse or space, why isn't there a picture of space? Why do we always see graphic images, computer generated imagery of space? Because a camera can't, because a camera works based on light. So you know, no light in space. Yeah, but what you're seeing is computer images of essentially what is a camera, because they use satellites to take cameras. So you do see- There ain't no pictures of space. What do you mean? I don't get what you mean. There isn't a photograph, a living photograph of anything in space. It's a fact. You can go on NASA website, they say there isn't, it's all computer generated. But what, yeah, so what I'm saying to you is that because of the light, that's it, that's in space. What, light in space? Exactly, that's my whole point. We, the we sun's get, in space, isn't it? Yeah, the sun is in space. So isn't that what gives but, but, you, but you still don't have daytime. Like, it's not like this is it. Like if you was in know. space, well, I don't know either, but I'm going to assume <laughs> that when you go to space, it's not like this. Because right. that's the way, because that's the it's way the sun bounces the off. Yeah. yeah, that's the way the sun but bounces off the planet. Lights would still be light in, it, in space. The no, images it they show of space, right? It the images they show of space and the moon. Did you see this moon, this moon, this moon? You can only see them because there's light on them. Yeah, but you can exactly see the camera what light. So what I'm saying to you is, we can only see how we see now. So that's what you're saying. So why is there no? The sun is in space. Why is why is space as we know it Dark. not just yeah? Why is it lit up? It's because when light is traveling, you don't see. It. 
you only see when it bounces off and reflects off something. That's the only way you see light. So that's why space is dark. So what I'm saying to you is, I don't know if this is the camera thing, because I'm not that up to it, but I'm saying that could possibly be why. Now, computer-generated images, again, I'm not that smart, so I don't know. But maybe there ain't no space. So what do you think's there then? What would you think's there? And the Bible says water, ain't it? Water? What, just we're just surrounded by water? Mm. The firmament. Yeah. Mm. I've never heard that before. Is that what it says in the Bible? Not read the Bible. Not since I was about <laughs> not since I was about sixteen, now. Yeah. God created the earth and put a firmament over it, which is why they always say Elon Musk rocket went up and then there's this big white thing and the rocket disappears when it hits the glass ceiling. That yeah, 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 yeah. There's a firmament. They've never been able to penetrate the firmament. Mm. So, you then, don't th so you don't think that they're going to space now? You think that's all? Yeah. Yeah, if it's made up. One hundred percent, because they said they lost all the data from the initial Apollo missions. How would you be going to space now when you're still saying, "Oh, we lost every single thing to do with Apollo one, two, three, four, a load of nonsense." Gotta go with space. It was a hoax, man. It was a hoax. Then it's a hoax now. They're okay. trying to get through the glass ceiling, and those Apollos that hit the glass ceiling and blew up are the ones where they start saying, "We can't do this anymore." Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my opinion. It's too risky. It's too it was risky. to prove dominance in terms of capability and power in it. But again, the scientists were all. Can I also say, when you say space, what are we talking about? Outer space. So we're not talking about our solar system. Because well, do you believe there's other I'm planets? I'm talking above the sky. So I don't yeah, know about do our no solar system. But this, this is what I'm saying. So, but the sun's above the sky. No, the sun's in the firmament. Okay, so are the other planets in the firmament as yeah. well? Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about the solar system then. So we've got a solar system, but beyond that, there's nothing. Uh, well, well, I don't know that part. And that's what I'm saying, you're not saying that, but that's I don't the know proposed. That, right. What I would build into that is obviously um, African history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like Dogen tribe and they knew Sirius and Sirius B and all these things about space and outer space and their argument. So for me, I'm still in between how can they have this evidence on walls about space and stuff. Um, obviously with all this Book of Enoch and Anunnaki stuff is all about outer space, but so is Star Trek. So that don't really bother me. Man can write anything and make it sound epic. But I don't know. We live in a time where there's flight and everything and there aren't no photographs of space. There aren't no photographs from this side of space to the bit that is anything or anything. To me, that's a concern. People arguing that satellites are on balloons because they find them on balloons and stuff. There should be more proof. We see film where people pull it to pieces of Mm -hmm. alleged astronauts in space and they say well clearly they're in a studio because that wouldn't happen in space yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you mean why like all the that moon with like the wind yeah, and the yeah, flag yeah. and the like the shadows and, things. and all sorts of stuff they've pulled it to pieces like I said it's questionable but the old history going back to the movie here is um, people talking about books Again, that they read where people talked about stuff. Yeah, it's so not tell you anyone sorry, saying, boy, in this lifetime, there's no guru who's saying, I'm experiencing this right now and doing this now. Where's that geezer? It's always someone referring to, yes, I read the book and I find it fascinating. But I don't know. I, just, just quickly, though, I don't know. I just want to get back to mm. the photos of space swim because... I genuinely believe that the images you're seeing are they're computer generated. So when we use the term photo, that's the process in which you get the image in it. But that them satellites take f essentially photos of space and they're computer generated images from Hubble. 
So you're but saying that NASA doesn't says that they're not? No, no, it's a graphic of space, but um, it's on their website. I didn't make the website. Yeah, but a photograph is a specific thing. There's one theme. man who a, creates a, them yeah, photographs. Yeah, but a photograph is a specific thing. What I'm saying to you is, if I take... There's no filmy there, and if you want to put it down to moving pictures as well, you know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying to you, you wouldn't do that, innit? So, if I take a picture on this, it's not, it's not actually a photo, is it? But it's still evidence. So what I'm saying to you is, them satellites, I think the satellites, and that's just from images there no that have been space, captured by the they Hubble. they been in space. You gotta be in space to take pictures of space. Yeah, but that depends on if you believe the satellites are real or not. No, mean? satellites are real. So satellites are really in They're space. They're just not in space. So this is what I'm saying, that depends on your depiction of whether satellites are real or not, or where they yeah, are, where they say real. they are. <laughs> they're just not in space. Yeah, where they say right. they are, where the they say The argument for that is because all internet and everything still runs in cables under the sea. All internet still runs in cables under the sea. If they were using satellites, why are they still putting cables under the sea? To make it better? They don't need cables under the sea. Why is South Africa not connected to Brazil? It's close enough on a round global map, but the argument is really on a flat earth. They're millions of miles apart. That's why some on a map it drags around, looks like it's close, but on a flat earth, sorry, it's not. Which is why they only run cabling across certain routes, which is why planes fly a certain way without explanation. On a round map, they would go this way, but they actually go this way and this way to get where they're going. There are lots of cases for it, but the cases, as far as I'm aware, and I'm not saying it to be wholly true, I've never been to space. I'm just interested in watching lots of different things, different arguments for and against. Mm -hmm. You know, and to me, space, I don't, NASA, I don't believe the space program to be real. Can I tell you a little story? Sure, sir. It is said that once Brahma went to meet Lord Krishna in Dwarka and he asked the gatekeeper, tell Sri Krishna Brahma has come to meet him. So Sri Krishna asked the gatekeeper, tell him which Brahma is he. He asked, Brahmaji was astonished, is there any Brahma apart from me? So he tell him the four-headed Brahma, the father of the four Kumars. The gatekeeper said, Shri Krishna called him in. So Brahmaji on coming, he said, Bhagavan, what was the meaning of your question, which Brahma, is there any Brahma apart from me? So Lord Krishna smiled. By his yoga maya, he called the Brahmas of innumerable universes. And they were all coming and offering their pranams. And our Brahmaji saw that there is one Brahma who's got a thousand heads. Mm. So our Chaturmukhi Brahma said, how big will be his universe? Mm. And then there was one Brahma who had one lakh heads. And one Brahma who had one crore heads. Mm. And one Brahma who had one Arab, one billion heads. So, Dekhi Chaturmukhi Brahma Hailo Chamutkar Krishna Charaneyasi Karilo Namaskar. Our Brahmaji fell at the feet of Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna said, Brahmaji, there are infinite universes. Yours is the smallest. That is the extent of God's creation. And all of this is one fourth of creation. This is the material realm. And beyond this is three fourths which is the spiritual realm, where this maya, this kal, this karm cannot go. So that is when we say God is great, that's how great he is. What's out there in the three-fourth? It's indescribable because our words can only compare with the glories of what we see here. Mm. Right. Now, let us say that we wish to give a comparison. We will give it with material things. And that is made by a different energy. So this material realm is made by an energy called Maya, the material energy. 
and we see the so much of glory in every aspect of material creation you know from the tiniest higgs boson to the biggest galaxies to cristiano ronaldo sure <laughs> absolutely if there's glory manifesting in everyone to sachin tendulkar so now <laughs> all of this is glorious imagine the glory of yog maya when the computer revolution started one college boy came up to me and said swami ji what computer does god use to keep an account of our karmas so i said you know computer is made by the material energy and god has a superior energy called yog maya by virtue of which he knows everything that we thought of from the time we were born till today not of one lifetime but our infinite lifetimes and not one soul but infinite souls of creation so how does god manage to do all that by his yog maya by that yog maya he creates his divine abode so let it suffice to say that it is sat chit and anand it is eternal full of bliss now can you imagine objects made of bliss mm. and sentient consciousness so that abode is sat chit anand full of divine bliss it's for the perfected souls that means when we reach that perfection we will then be there mm. can you become imperfect when you go there if you fail a test there once we are situated in knowledge then the ignorance will not overcome us again tad vishnu paramam padam sada pashyanti surya it's the, the soul is on a journey you know so in the journey we are slowly growing and we taking a few steps ahead maybe a few steps back and then again few steps ahead but once we reach that perfection it means that now we are situated in knowledge so when you have divine bliss then why should you choose something far inferior yeah thoughts well, that last bit there when you have divine bliss why would you cho- choose something in the future no inferior oh inferior yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay which is true even now i think what you were saying the other thing as well is like i, I think our problem is we i think until you have divine bliss if that's what you want to call it or you want to call it um like your chakras raised to the to the infinite to you like on your optimum and this is the problem we will really never know what our optimum is and until then i don't think we can comprehend i think our comprehension of what space out of space even when you talk about heaven because you can only really it's like when you look at clouds and you know and people say like uh, your mind your mind will try and make sense of everything of something it's seen prior so this is why when you look at clouds you say oh it looks like a dog or oh, it looks like an elephant oh, it looks like this but if you ask 10 different people they'll say different things so your mind can only comprehend what it's seen previously which is why i think it's so hard to understand some of these concepts or to think about when you think about <clears throat> the fourth dimension what's the fourth dimension explain what the fourth dimension is like is the fourth dimension heaven or no but so i'm saying it's so like but you can't really comprehend the fourth dimension can you no what this is you can't explain the fourth dimension you have to be in the fifth dimension to explain the fourth dimension exactly so we so like why 3d we can, we can explain 2d, 2D on yeah paper and stuff so until we move up to that level we can't explain what we don't we're not in effectively and have full awareness of yeah so with the modeling that they use the 2d 3d i think they've made 4d models now so it's just to me a lot of these things do we not know or have we forgotten 
and we really know because well even if we've forgotten we don't know mm. so if Did previous <laughs> yeah I was going to say if uh, previous civilizations knew mm. then they knew well they we, knew but we don't because know because they're researching things that they're finding from previous generations to yeah. give them the incentives to go forward the translations and stuff like that. They find the stone, it tells them how to read a language that has been dead, they couldn't remember how to. They find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are clues and stuff, allegedly. Do you think, like, any of these things will become widely adopted? <clears throat> I mean, that's probably the wrong <clears throat> phrase, because I guess we say widely adopted, but look how big places like India, Africa are, so they are widely adopted, but... Well, I think I'm what's talking. happening at the moment with this idea of the one world religion is putting it all back into one, and it ultimately they're saying it was one, but it was basically documented of the Anunnaki and the people before us, which they never spoke about in our lifetime until recently. Mm -hmm. You know, they just made us think God created you and that was it. Even though the book says go out and multiply. And so they, I don't think this information comes into this. It's either a bloody lie or they let me out because it's just suddenly come and it was not on the internet 20 years ago yeah so this is what i said there's a flood of it now and they let me out so all these explorers they've been exploring everywhere for years all these photos and everything it, it makes a lot of things questionable you know um and makes us unsure about lots of things fortunately they also give us a good dose of things to worry about in the real <laughs> in real time you know for the guys who study that stuff they obviously study and live their life in isolation so it all makes sense to them maybe they're not going to work and have family problems and stuff I assume these guru type fellows will have sacrificed that to acquire this knowledge that they share with us so you can just take it in and keep adding to the mm -hmm. knowledge until mm -hmm. you come up with your own understanding of it. Well, that's what you're meant to do. Mm. I feel like if you're just taking people's knowledge in and going, oh, yeah, that's right, then it's... I don't think, okay, I don't think anyone should do that. Believe to know any. So we believe this to be the case, but we got to go from here to knowing something. But do we? Why do we have to know? Mm, well we have to know because isn't that like part of the problem that's what people say like part of the problem is I think people misunderstand science when they say well scientists think they know like I think like good science is always trying to debunk your own theory that's what makes good science because you have to have a theory no, that's what makes it science the fact that you are trying to debunk well yeah this is what I'm saying so yeah so that's what's good about it. But and science in itself just means a repeatable set of things that can be tested against at minute. So well, it has to be uh, been observed. It has to be able to be observed yeah. and measured. Tested. So so science yeah. just denotes how you're dealing with that particular but, thing. But what I'm saying to you is like the problem, and this is where I think religion or... This is where I think when people have to know or there has to be something. I think people and human beings in particular have to know, if, like they want to know everything. Where there's some things you can't just believe, like, well, if you believe that, why do we need to move into the knowing of it? Especially when we're talking about third, well, not third, fourth, fifth dimensional stuff. Do we need to know that? Why? The human being just wants by to know. default expanding it, knowledge increases. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know there are for every challenge groups of men who step up and take it head on building bridges digging tunnels whatever it mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. the Africans in the De Beers mines in South Africa millions of them down there digging out diamonds because to them it's important for their day to day living even yeah, though yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, potential death trip yeah yeah so the world creates situations that forces people to work and do stuff at risk for some there's a reward system wages and benefits um 
for others in other places it's different they get to go home and see their family and they're not all off at work at different times so life is different in different places different contexts india has physical wealth in terms of all this ancient stuff that still works that people in what they would call the dark ages blanked out everybody else's culture and pretended it didn't exist while they plundered learning to make this society believe Eve. it's advanced yeah yeah yeah. You understand? yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas all it's done is gone and usurped everybody's information into one place and you know as far as we can go like i said that started back with the library of alexander when the vatican stole all the stuff out of there and burned it down mm -hmm. so getting all the wealth and all the knowledge has always been one of the key governments of those people who want to run mind games mm -hmm. um, and power and control so but india like i said just like africa has physical testament the problem with it is we're not hearing accounts from the natives we hear the European accounts who don't have physical anything, they come and try to read hieroglyphics and told us, oh, this is not made by Africans or go to India and say, oh, this is not made by Indians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go around the world telling you what is and what isn't. They don't have a concern because it all comes to them anyway by the looks of it. The rest of us are pitted against each other trying to be that man one way or another chasing that dream of being powerful and you know but to me let me say knowledge is power it can only increase if you study you'll find out more true or false who knows belief knowing is better than believing i say you know they say there was a religion that people did there was these chasmically do these catastrophic things that happen on earth and kills everybody off and the knowledge has to be relearned again and America practiced that as its war strategy in Syria bomb it to back to Stone Age and they have to rebuild and come again I believe that to be common war policy all the way along annihilate people and they have to they lose their knowledge self of sense everything, sense. everything yeah, goes yeah, yeah. one time yeah um so that's how they rule people by shoving them around and putting them back into ignorance and they have to rebuild and come again while they retain wealth knowledge and power mm -hmm. a constant generation after generation passing the wealth passing the knowledge and the power whereas you don't really know who your great great granddad is yeah it's true it's true deep man deep all right, we're going to leave it there with knowledge is power. We out. Peace. Peace. You got time for one more?